So once the Kamala came in, Abdullah knew that his money making days were been over. It is like when I, I know when Huck Hogan first came to Japan, and Andre the Giant been going there for years, and because Hogan was so big and so tall and, and was so popular with the Japanese people, Andre the Giant Hogan his first night there beat Hogan so bad, ran him all around the building, ran him out the building. He did not like Hogan at that time because to him, Hogan was a threat right. to him, his money in, in Japan. Where when Vince McMahon started calling uh, Big John Stubb the jank. Didn't go so well didn't for John go in the with, with Andre. <laughs> I mean, I felt sorry for John Stubb. was I mean, a Big very John, nice guy. Very nice individual. But when, he's, when he got in that ring, Andre would go straight for him. If you watch some of the old matches, Andre didn't wait for no introduction. Like for shot going after him. Yeah, it, it was no introduction. It, it was no, the, the, the bell ringing. It was, it was like he, it was like a pit bull. He saw him, and as soon as he laid eyes on him, he went for him. I, we, I wrestled with Andre the Giant in a metal lab against Ken Patero and Big John Studd. And... I get in the ring, me and Patero, we working around the ring and everything. And all of a sudden, Patero reach up and tag uh, John Studd. So, John Studd, he was, Patero going to hold me and tell Studd, get to me, big John Studd. So, the ring started moving. And I say, I asked Patero, I said, what the hell is that? <laughs> he said, Andre coming. <laughs> Just like that. He said, here come Andre. And sure enough, I've got it. Patrol, Patrol got me in the headlock like, like this. Andre, you know, them, you see them big feet go by me. Boom, boom. Heading right for job to Stud barely got his head through the, the rope there before Andre. <laughs> I beat him. Yeah. How, back to Abdullah, Tony. How would you explain Abdullah to maybe like our crack staff we have in the back helping out? Walter Hillside and Roy Shack and the rest of the gang. They weren't around to see Abdullah right. in his prime. But this is a guy, even though he never competed in WWE and had limited exposure in the modern day of NWA slash WCW, uh, he was a guy that made just as much money as the big time. If not more. If not more. Yeah. Working a limited schedule in Japan and sometimes Puerto Rico. He'd have occasional runs here and well, there he was down smart. in world class. Where, where explain he, it. If, if where, 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 where this is what I have to do to explain it to me. He would never, and Brody too. Yeah. They would never stay anywhere longer than six weeks. The reason is that it took the promoter six weeks to get him over. So by the time they get you over, they want to, Abdul, they're going to use him to get someone else over. Right. So Abdul would stay uh, 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 six, six months in the state, six months in Japan. And he just went back and forth with the two things. And Brody did the same thing. They never stayed in no one area. Me and my scar the same way. So they was all able to keep themselves good for a long time. Because after about six or seven months, the promoters start asking you to, to uh, use you to build other do wrestlers. Do jobs. To do the job. Abdullah didn't like doing jobs. No, no, no. No, no, no jobs. Well, where he knew when to, he said, never overstay your welcome. So after about six or seven months, Abdullah would either go to Puerto Rico or he would go to Japan. And Brody would do the same thing. And another guy that, that went along with the same routine was Mel Mascaris. It was uh, Boba Mazil did the same thing. Never stayed. I mean, his, his base was out of uh, 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 Detroit uh, with the Sheik. Right. But, yeah, but they had a legendary feud. They're too, legendary, yeah. but and, and legendary, and they fought for years and years and years. But he never stayed there. Yeah. Then he would leave and go to Canada for a while. He would leave and go to the WW, uh, uh, WCW or yeah. WWF or AWF. WWF. He never wrestled in Madison Square Garden. Never did. Bobo. He never did. No, oh, I'm talking about Abdullah. I'm sorry. No, not Abdullah. No, Bobo had a run. Yeah, yeah, Bobo did. But what I'm saying, they, Abdullah and all of them was on pretty much the same schedule. Joe LaDuke, they knew how to protect themselves for not, uh, because once a promoter get a tape of Ernie Ladd was the same way. Ernie Ladd never, I think he stayed in Louisiana longer than he stayed in where you're based out of Louisiana. But he would go to Mid South uh, with, uh, for a while. Yeah. But then you see Ernie in the, uh, uh, the following week, uh, about a, a six, eight months later, he's in Georgia Championship Wrestling. So a lot of the guys they didn't stick with no, didn't stay in a territory, and they done that in order to keep their keep their name from being hurt. All right. Well, with Abdullah, a lot of, and I've, I kind of witnessed this firsthand one time when I was up with Abdullah 
in Tony Rumble down in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, kind of notoriously cheap. The World Wrestling Federation was live at the Wikimoku Youth and Civic Center in Salisbury, Maryland, Sunday, June the 26th, 1983. In the opening contest, Don Kernodal beat Mac Rivera. Sergeant Slaughter with the win over Tony Gurria. Rocky Johnson defeated Ivan Koloff via disqualification. George the Animal Steel victorious over Chief J. Strongbow. Little Beaver and Farmer Pete beat Skylo Low and Sonny Boy Hayes. And in the main event, the WWF World Champion Bob Backlund retained the title over WWF Intercontinental Champion Don Morocco. If you are in Salisbury Live, share your memories in the comment section below. Use the links in the description box to keep wrestling legends working in our eBay store and on our world-renowned Patreon streaming service so we can bring you more interactive superstar shoot interviews to relive the good old days of professional wrestling. Check it out. Boston Wrestling Sports in the MWF explodes into a new year with professional wrestling content galore and need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after our Monday Night Raw review, it's Wrestling Insiders at your house with WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. after NXT and AEW, join rotating legends on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday night after SmackDown, don't miss John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, history videos, bonus live episodes, pay-per-view watch-alongs, and more. For less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, get early ad-free access to our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times